Uh, Scotty, get started, please. Yeah, Eric, um, I'm curious if are you able to turn your mind off of basketball like when you get these breaks or around the holidays at all? Uh, only while I'm in San Diego. Pretty like, easy, pretty easy on the boardwalk and, and being at Don Bravo's to turn it off, but only then as soon as, uh, but I mean, even then it's, you know, watching tape and, and trying to figure things out. So, so I would say a little bit Scotty in all seriousness. Um, but you know, the one place, you know, that, I, that my mind does get away a little bit is, is there because just so many friends and, and family and, and the beach. But other than that, no. Do you find that to be good for you? Because I know you probably go 90 to nothing, you know, 300 plus days out of the year, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think right now, and I think that it's been discussed with a lot of college coaches, just that, you know, there, there's really not any downtime um, to, to turn your mind off or to, to catch a breath. I mean, we do it as a family over July 4th, and, when, and then we do it, you know, for three days over um, – you know, Christmas, but you have to consider, you know, three days, um, you know, over Christmas is not much when you're flying, you know, to California because there's there's travel day involved in, in those as well. Last thing I've got, just five games this month. Um, how, how have you and how have the guys handled it and kind of taken to, to some of the downtime between games? Yeah, I mean, I think that once we get into a, a, a normal rhythm, which, um, you know, finals throws you off the rhythm, um, you know, it wasn't that long ago where we had, we did not have a Christmas break, you know? Um, I mean, when I played, we, we never went home for Christmas. And I know at Nevada, at least the first year or two, we, there was no Christmas break. Um, you know, I think the guys have done great. I mean, we've been able to go two a days, um, you know, prior to the last game, we've gone two a days, um, you know, since we came back from, from our, our Christmas break and it's allowed us to clean some things up offensively. Um, you know, it's allowed us to do prep. It's allowed us hopefully to, to see some of the holes that we have in areas that we have to have growth in. Curtis. Must obviously Wilmington's had quite a bit of success on the road already. The, the win at Rupp stands out there, I guess, what are some of the traits that you see in them that make them successful in those environments? Well, one, they're a deep team. Uh, two, they have a, a great star in number 13, White, who can really score high-volume free-throw attempt player. They run him off Ivers hoops. Um, they'll isolate him in a zipper play um, for him to, to drive the ball hard. Um, they have three-point shooting surrounding uh, 13, White. Uh, Newby's a really good shooter, number one. Um, you know, Jenkins, number zero, is an incredible shooter. Um, Ross can make shots at the power forward spot. Hodge can make shots. Uh, both of their backup bigs, both of them can make threes. Um, and then, and then they have a point guard in Phillips, um, who's a really, really steady, heady, smart, excellent mid range shooter, good dribble driver, really good player inside of 17 feet. Uh, they know their roles, uh, they, they play with a good pace offensively, defensively. They'll deny a little bit at times. Uh, they have a little bit of a three-quarter court press that they'll do at times. Um, they'll switch a lot defensively. Um, you know, we've had enough time to, to, to dissect many of their games. You mentioned they played well on the road. Uh, they got a great record. Um, it's a team that, that uh, I'm sure in their conference will, uh, will be at the top of their conference. Um, so all those, you know, those are some of their, some of their characteristics. And, and interestingly enough, like, you know, they're, they're one center. I mean, he played, you know, played like 40 minutes on the season. He played 20 minutes against uh, Kentucky and hit a big three, that being number 23 and 30 is their normal backup center for our, and he did not play much against Kentucky, but in the other games, uh, he's a three-dimensional scorer who can score on the block, score facing up, and make threes. So, um, you know, and then McGriff, 21, who starts at center, is a, an active player um, who rebounds. And then and then uh, right around the 16-40 mark, or, um, you know, they're going to sub five guys at a time. Um, hockey line sub. 
um, against Kentucky. They did that hockey line sub again at the 12 minute mark. Um, you know, so uh, it's a team that's very, very dangerous. It's a team that um, is very well coached. It's a team that understands their roles. And it's a team that has two stars surrounded by really, really good perimeter players. And it's a very, very old team. I mean, they got some, they got some veterans on this team that, that have played at multiple schools and, and uh, played multiple years of college basketball. And just curious, what have your impressions been so far of Keon on the on the defensive end of the floor? And then maybe what have you seen from him from that standpoint behind closed doors at, at practice? Yeah, I mean, we hope that Keon can, uh, you know, he gives us bounce. He gives us uh, a sense of urgency, a sense of energy, he gives us speed. He changes the complexion of, of, of our tempo offensively, especially defensively. He can pick up in the backcourt. Uh, we've been a low volume steel team. Uh, hopefully he can add to that. You know, I think last year as a freshman at Washington, uh, because they play zone, I don't think that, um, you know, I, we are hopeful that that playing man-to-man -man defense, he's going to be able to create more steals than what you would get opportun opportunistically in a zone. Um, but been, been very happy with him. I think offensively he's a guy that's going to give us a, when the shot clock is, is winding down, uh, he is a guy, another guy that, that's going to be able to get a shot for us when, when the shot clock's winding down, obviously T Mark's been a guy that's been able to do that. And battle's been able to do that. Um, you know, L at times have, has done it for us. Devo at times has done, and, and Keon is just, a, you know, he's another guy that, that off the bounce will be able to uh, create shots for himself or others when a play breaks down or when teams pressure or teams deny, I think he's, he's going to give us a, an, an added dimension Um you know, against some of these teams that 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 have some defenses that try to take you out of your stuff. I mean, even Wilmington, I mean, at times they're going to switch one through five and you've got to be able to uh, to have guys that, that can play the game without structure. Um, and, and Keon's certainly a guy that can play and thrive against um, non-structured situations uh, late clock. Jackson? Coach, uh, what have you seen when you went back on film from the four guard lineup? What kind of stood out from from that second half lineup that made you guys so successful? We played with pace. We played with energy. We got to loose balls quicker. Our post defense, actually, Devo Davis played as good a post defense as anybody we had. He was the one guy that fronted the post. He was the one guy that worked around a three quarter. Um, uh, just the pace. Um, I thought we shared the ball better. Um, we had a sense of energy uh, about our, our, our team as well. Um, and then we become harder to guard when we do that as well. You know, how, how much are you with that lineup specifically? Is there a, a concern with, with rebounding maybe that, or do you think it's something that could be sustainable, you know, moving forward, playing those four guards and, and a big together? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think Jackson that I've ever said we're, we're rolling that lineup out. I mean, you're 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 talking about our last game um, against a team that didn't have great size. So um, never one time have I said, hey, we're, we're rolling with this four guard lineup. Here's who the four guard. We're still trying to figure out who we are, just as we have the last four years. Um, we, we don't have a ton of continuity um, with returners, as as do many teams across the country right now in all sports. Um, and so what we do against Wilmington uh, is not necessarily what we've done um, against Wilmington or Abilene Christian or certainly not what we'll do against, you know, Auburn. So, I mean, I think every game takes on its own identity. Every game you try to mix and match and try to figure out, um, you know, the way that we're going to defend Wilmington is not the way that we defended Abilene Christian. Um, you know, you want your core philosophies to be there. Um, you know, whether we go, you know, four guard lineup against teams that press, maybe that happens, uh, you know, maybe a big's playing really well and you don't want to take him off the floor. I don't, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball on, uh, but I do think that that, that group in that particular game, Jackson, they played very, very well together. Bob. Eric, sorry. Pressing the wrong thing there. Hey, I wanted to ask you about bench points. Sorry, I pressed the wrong thing a lot in a lot of games of late. 
Okay, well, she'll get it figured out. Um, hey, uh, obviously, KB's played off the bench all year and really most of his career. T Mark's played off the bench of late. Um, I, I know, you know, bench points are a big deal to you. Just kind of wondering what your philosophy is on that. And, and like you say, lineups can change, but at least of late, your top two scores have been playing off the bench. Kind of what, 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 what's your thoughts, thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I do like Bob. Uh, it, it's really comforting to look down the bench. Um, and and be able to have a, a go-to score. I mean, we did it with JD Note a few years ago. Um, you know what? If if you if you just start uh, your five scores or whatever you however you want to word it, and then you get down in a game, how how do you you know? It puts you in a dilemma then. Um, and so um, you know whether it's Philadelphia 76ers uh, bringing Bob. Bobby Jones off the bench many, many years ago, or um, another Sixer team when Mark Averoni started and then came out of a game fairly quickly. I mean, I, I do think there's beauty, um, you know, and, and because we're on the subject of, of Wilmington of late, they bring in their leading score white off the bench. Um, so, you know, I mean, how we go moving forward, I, I would like one score that we can turn to, um, to give us a, a a punch or some juice if if we're struggling offensively. I don't know if that answers your question, Bob. It, of course, Frank Ramsey, he's kind of the, the godfather, sixth man, I guess, back in the 50s. I know you know that because you're a historian. Um, but but um, yeah, but right now you kind of have a sixth and a seventh man, at least a late. I, I get T-Mark might be back in the lineup. But um, do you remember ever having that much firepower coming off the bench that, that you've had the last couple games? Well, we've had better records than we have right now. So I don't know what you consider firepower. I mean, um, well, uh, two guys scoring 43 points off the bench, I'd call that firepower. And 62 points off the bench total, I'd call that firepower. Pretty good firepower. Yeah, but it's good. I want, we want it to correlate to our record. We better look at our non conferences that have not been as much firepower as I hope. Um, or we got to defend, maybe. Maybe that's the. Maybe you're right, Bob. Maybe it's maybe we got enough firepower off the bench and 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 defensively things got to change and, and get better because um, you're right. I mean, those in all seriousness, those two guys scoring off the bench, those numbers are insane. Our our bench um, plus minus has been great, um, you know, especially of late. Um, but having said that, you know, we got to we got to put everything together through 40 minutes. We got We got to figure out a way to generate more wins. You you bring up Wilmington. I was looking up where you guys rank. They they actually are number one. They're averaging over forty points. So it's it's obviously white, like you said. I think you had twenty seven off the bench at Kentucky and twenty seven their last game. Just what what do you think about their their bench their bench? Yeah, I mean they they like I've mentioned. I mean we've studied their substitution patterns. Um, you know normally we don't study substitution patterns other than maybe a sixth or seventh man, but. I mean, I've mentioned number 23 and I've dissected his minutes and the games that he played and the games that he hasn't played. I've dissected. I mean, that's their third string center um, when you just base it off minutes. So, I mean, if we're studying their third string center as well as their second string center and and uh, and see the impact that they've had in different games, then obviously that shows you how deep I haven't mentioned number 22, um, you know, Mays, who comes off the bench as, as a backup point guard and. And uh, and he played minutes against Kentucky, and he's a guy that can make three balls, especially when you look back uh, in his career at his three. So yeah, this is it. the teamwork that's coming into Bud Walton um, on Saturday uses their bench and is as deep as any team that we've played all year, and probably as deep as any team that we will play all season long, and uses their bench um, as effectively as any team that we've played all season and certainly anybody that we will play. I don't know if I've seen an SEC team uh, this year and I have not studied them like we have um, an upcoming opponent, but um, they do, they do hockey line sub um, five at a time and they'll do it for sure. What they've done late of late is, is at least at that 16 and a half to 17 and a half minute mark that's coming at you. So, um, and then, like I said, they, they, they've done it, again, around the 12 or 13 minute mark in other games as well. And, and then, you know, I, I know upsets are happening every week, but um, when you saw that, that Wilming, knowing you were playing Wilmington, 
and they they want it rough. What, what what went through your mind? What was your reaction to that? And is that something that you can really you know use with your team to make sure you guys are are at your best? Well, I mean, what, all you got to do is look at Wilmington's record to, and that should you know, I mean, that lets you know how good they are. But we try to schedule teams that that are really good. I mean, that's that's the that's the object of what we do. Um, you know, we don't we don't sit in the office and in, in non-conferences and say, Hey, you know, how many wins can we get? Let's just schedule wins. I mean, you, you schedule people that you think can challenge you. You schedule people that you think uh, are going to have good, you know, like them beating Kentucky. Um, you know, it's not good for the sec, but it's, it's good for our strength of schedule. Um, you know, when, when, if, if they beat a power five team, that's good for us that Wilmington has had success. Um, you know, so for us, we have to come ready to play. I know as a coaching staff, we have as much respect for Wilmington as any team that will play all season long because uh, they got a star player. They got a, a, a secondary star. They got great surrounding pieces. Um, I mean, Todd Lee's, you know, he played against the, their starting small forward, Harden Hayes, and and knows his game really well from, from the Summit League. And, um I mean, they get, they crash the offensive board. They, they, they do a lot of things really, really well. Yeah, one more. Um, how would the Christmas night practice go? And then how have the two-day practices gone? And when you don't play for nine days, I know you're practicing hard, but do you worry about that? Or do you feel like your practices have been pretty good? No, I, well, we've been real. I mean, this team, Bob, it, it has practiced really well. We have great shoot-arounds. We have great practices. Um, we Actually, we had a meeting early this morning as a staff, and we – I mean, this team practices as well as any team that we've had since we've been, um, you know, at, at Arkansas. Um, it maybe doesn't practice quite as good as our team at Nevada with Caleb and Cody Martin and Jordan Caroline. But um, as far as any Arkansas team that we've had, they practice and have shoot arounds as well. We got to carry it over the game for 40 minutes and have a sustained um, amount of urgency for 40 minutes. And, and um, hopefully, you know, we're progressing towards that point. Well, tough one here. What what was their favorite Christmas present that you mine got? Was, mine was this watch that, you know, Fitbit watch that tells me if I'm working hard when I'm on the treadmill in the weight room. Did, did Danielle get you that or who got you that? Yeah, Danielle got me that. Yep. All right, okay. Coach, get down to practice. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.